This is hard for people, huh? It's hard for me. It's hard for me. Because I feel like I haven't preached the whole gospel. And I repent. I repent. This hit me. Did you ever hear of Ray Comfort? Yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. Like I, I was blown away. Now I don't, I didn't read a whole bunch of stuff, but this right here blew me away. It's just a scenario that, that rocked me to the core. I'm going to read this to you. You guys ready? Okay. I, I just, this, this right here like overtook me. I was like, oh my gosh. Because it's how you come in. When you come into the gospel because you came in for a better life, you've come in for the wrong gospel. When you come to Jesus because he's going to give you this and give you this, you really didn't surrender. See, what you're saying is that I've come to get this. What you've done is a taste test to see if it's true. <laughs> it's the same thing as getting a buzz. Well, I'll try this Jesus thing. Maybe there's a buzz in it. <laughs> That's not Jesus. It's full. Your goal as a Christian is to be conformed to his image, is to be transformed into his image, into his likeness, and to actually walk like Christ walked. Jesus didn't despise sinners, but he hated sin, and he addressed it all the time. And he said words like sinners to people that were in sin. Yet he loved them and everybody followed him. What has flip-flopped in the church today? What has flip-flopped? says there's two men that are seated on a plane. <clears throat> oh my gosh. A stewardess gives the first man a parachute and instructs him to put it on because it will improve his flight. Not understanding how a parachute could, a parachute could possibly improve his flight, the first passenger is a little skeptical. Finally, he decides to see if the claim is true. After strapping on the parachute, he notices his burdensome weight of the parachute. He has difficulty even sitting upright. Consoling himself with the promise of a better flight, our first passenger decides to give it a little time. Because he's the only one wearing a parachute, some of the other passengers began smirking at him and making fun of him, which only adds to his utter humiliation. Unable to stand it any longer, our friend slumps in his seat, unstraps the parachute, throws it to the floor. Disillusionment and bitterness fill his heart because as far as he's concerned, he was told a lie. Another stewardess gives a second man a parachute, but listen to her instructions. She tells him to put it on because at any moment, he's going to be jumping out of the plane at 25,000 feet. Our second passenger gratefully straps the parachute on. He doesn't notice its weight on his shoulders, nor that he can't even sit upright. His mind is consumed with the thought of what will happen if he jumped without it. When other passengers laugh at him, he's thinking, it's not funny, you're going to need a passenger, you're going to need a parachute too. The first man's motive for putting on that parachute was solely to improve his flight. As a result, he was humiliated by passengers, disillusioned by an unkept promise, and embittered against the stewardess who gave it to him. As far as he's concerned, he will never put that thing on again. He will never have it on his back again. The second man put the parachute on to escape the danger of the upcoming jump because he knew what would happen to him without it. He had a deep-rooted joy and peace in his heart knowing he was, he'll be saved from certain death because he was given the ability to withstand the mockery and he was given the ability to withstand the mockery of the passengers because he knows the end from the beginning. That's crazy. His attitude towards the stewardess who gave him that parachute was one of heartfelt gratitude. That's crazy. <clears throat> the first one is a man-centered gospel. And it makes sense. Why did I come to Jesus? Because somebody told me I was going to have love, joy, peace, patience. I was promised a good life with no problems. Come to Jesus. How of you that are just tired? Come on, just give your, just raise your hand, slip up your, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. But they didn't do it to escape the jump. Here's the deal. One day, 
you and I are gonna all face the Lord. It's the truth. Are you guys with me? Is this too much? I've been going through it, buddy. You have no idea. I've been like trembling, shaking, and in a new place of the fear of the Lord and in a new place of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to bring the reality of the law into a witness to show a person their need for grace. How can you want to be found if you don't know you're lost? How can you, how can you, how can you want to see if you don't know that you're blind? How can you don't, how can you want to really live if you don't know that you're dead? The Bible says that we're dead in our sin. Dead. The wages of sin is death. It's the truth. We have to somehow get to people and not just promise them a better flight. Help me here. Am I the only one that's convicted to the, to the core? This isn't legalism. It's the truth. There is, there is a day of wrath coming. It's no joke. Like sometimes we think, gosh, it's just crazy because the enemy wants you to think God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and whoever believes in him. And there's all the time in the world to get to that place of believing in him. But if we don't understand that God's, God's rule or his commandments are his laws and his laws, if we want to do it as a good person, we have to obey them all. And nobody has. Nobody has. Are you with me? And so we have to know that we've sinned against God. And so we, we need to know that God's grace in sending Jesus and putting Jesus as the substitute for my sin, that we actually become the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus when we see the proper reason that he died for us. He didn't just die for us to give us a great life. An abundant life is or the fruits of the gospel but it's not a selling point. <laughs> Come on, like walking in the miraculous and telling somebody they can go and heal the sick. If you just give your life to Jesus, you can do this too. That is a fruit and a side benefit of the gospel, but that's not the reason for doing it. A reason for doing it is because you don't wanna live that life of sin and offend a holy God. He's a holy God and he loves us with everything we are, everything he is, like he is love. But because he is love doesn't mean that he's not going to enforce the reality of the truth. Are you with me? I saw this when I got saved. And for some reason it's taken me 16 years to explain it. And I feel like I've just seen something completely brand new. What I won't ever do is take the miraculous out of the gospel. It's miraculous. It's a miracle that I can come to Jesus through all my junk and all my sin and him say, not guilty. That's a miracle. Yeah. 